Kirk on a beautiful day in Indiana. Uh, the match is already going on, so I'm not going to do too much of an intro. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into this action that's going on. Butler's already up 1-2-0 against Nepal with a quick score. Let's see what we got going on. Like Brian said, Butler already up one goal a minute into this game. Morales taking control on the wall, trying to get that pass off to Kai. Great with a solid Morales defense. A big demo from Kai. Morales getting it clear away. Tough miss from smooth space. Ball back in the DePaul half. Putting little, pressure on the goal. A little bit of a double commit there from Butler. Trying not to overextend. Another good demo. Two a double good demo coming out from Craig. Kai still in possession. Craig going for a shot, blocked away by Joseph. Joseph low on boost, trying to push that ball into the Butler half. Kai able to clear it away. From what we've seen so far, it's been a pretty dominant game in terms of Butler possession. All this pressure seems to be on the Paul half. They clear it, and Butler just turns it right back around. Exactly. A little bit of a lofty clear. Morales able to get it back on the DePaul half. Ooh, tough miss from Krig and Patso. Joseph able to take control. Goes for the flick. Ends up high. A triple commit from Butler. Not exactly what you want to see. But Kai's still able to clear it downfield. Krig with an easy shot on goal. No one was there to defend. Butler up 2-0 now. Absolutely not the best clear from Joseph there. He was hoping for a double touch, couldn't find the second, and Craig was able to slam it back into the net for a 2-0 advantage in favor of Butler. Two minutes and three seconds left to play. Smith's base back. Oh! It's trying to reset it, but Morales was right there to capitalize on it, pushing in the goal. Yeah, it Quick. looked like School. Smooth Space faked out his own teammate, giving Morales a free shot on net. Just like that, 3-0. A little bit under half of the game to go. Butler with a dominant 3-0 lead. Patso gets a decent clear down to Smooth Space. DePaul trying to make something happen, but Butler is just there to cut off all of their passing plays before they can even develop. Smooth space, shipping it up for Joseph. Morales able to get the block off the back wall. Over to Craig. Morales back in possession, going up off the wall, going for the air dribble. Over one. Oh, wow, that was beautiful. Beautiful air was from Morales, but wasn't able to capitalize on it. Still pressure on the Paul side. Minute 30 to go left in the game, and Kai slams it in with Yet again, another triple commit from Butler, this time working out in their favor. Beautiful down off the bar and actually off of the DePaul defender as well. Butler 4-0, a minute 30 left in the game. And this is a best of five, so we'll see if Butler's gonna be able to keep up this pressure through the rest of the games, but it is looking pretty dominant from what we've seen so far. Smooth space again, back towards his own net. Not entirely sure if that's exactly what he wants to do. Joseph's able to take possession up the field. It works in their favor and they're able to get the ball on Butler's side. However, still can't capitalize and instantly gets cleared back on the pause side. Exactly. DePaul's just unable to capitalize on their upfield passing plays. Butler's just there to cut off those passing lanes. Smooth Space gets it over to the backboard, cleared away by Morales. Cleared away downfield. Patso's got to block it. DePaul's still trying to go for those passing plays. Good save there from Patso. Craig's up for the ball. Unfortunate double whiff. Beautiful block by Morales. Shot again, blocked again by Morales. Some beautiful defense from Morales coming in clutch there. Absolutely. 10 seconds to go. 
seems like this game's pretty much over. This would score four goals in four seconds. It would be quite the feat, not impossible, but very, very unlikely. Butler takes game one over DePaul. What are we thinking? It seemed pretty dominant. Yeah, I mean, unless DePaul can keep it on, their, on Butler's side more and build pressure, make them make mistakes, it's just not going to happen for them. At the end of the day, you need to score. Absolutely. Getting, getting shut out 4-0 game one is not the start that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Coming in against the Butler roster, currently second in the Big East, you need to come out swinging against this roster. They're so aggressive. They play very, very well together. And it just works. Yeah, I will say, Butler is feeling pretty hot right now, too. They just had a, a very good showing in the uh, May Star League, playing against Northwood, one of the best teams to do it. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, a very close match with them, too. So I'm sure they're, they're feeling hot off of that and want to show it here. Yeah, unfortunately, it was a 1-3 loss. Um, but even taking a game on the current Collegiate Rocket League World Champions, that's pretty impressive. Yep. Absolutely crazy. And it looks like we're heading into the second game here. Let's take it away. Game two against DePaul is underway. Craig, immediate booming clear onto the DePaul side. Gets a double. Immediate goal. Just like that. Seven, seven seconds. seconds. Seven seconds into the game. And Butler takes the lead. And this is the aggression we were talking about. Yeah, that's Butler's the, just there to capitalize. The triple commit that you're talking about, and DePaul can't do anything about it. Even if Craig did miss there, he had his teammates to follow up. Exactly. Morales going for the booming clear, gets another off the wall. Can't quite drop it in front of the net. Kai's able to take possession. Unfortunately, no member there to follow up on that pass. Kai still has possession on the blue ball half. Rare miss by Patso. Trying to take it off the back wall. Blocked by Craig. Still in the DePaul half. DePaul's got to get a booming clear here. Just like that, Joseph clears it away, but Craig is there to catch it. Just like what we saw in game one, this offensive pressure from Butler is seemingly unstoppable. A little bit of a team bump there. A little bit of miscommunication on the Butler front. Morales left to fend for himself in the DePaul half. DePaul trying to set up a passing play, but Krig is there to interrupt. And like we keep saying, the ball is back on the DePaul half. And just as I say that, DePaul gets another booming clear. But instantly, no one's there to capitalize. No one's there to keep the pressure on, and Butler just clears it away. Absolutely. The booming clears are great, but if there's no one there to follow up and get a touch, the ball just goes right back to the other side. You can think about it as a game of ping pong. If there's no one there to follow it, the ball's just going to keep getting smacked back and forth across the field. A little bit of miscommunication there from the front of the ball. Trying to make something work. Craig and Joseph going for a little 50. Patso going for the double. Morales able to clear it away pretty easily. Craig able to shut down Patso before that play can develop. Morales gets beat by Patso in the air. Kai's able to take a little bit of time and control it. Leaves it to Craig. And Kai ends up booming it away. It does look like this Butler offense is slowing down a little bit. You being a little more meticulous with what they're doing now that they have the lead. Yeah, and they're starting to figure out how DePaul is, is trying to play this game. What we've seen in game one is a lot of booming clears, a lot of attempts for passing plays. And it's, it's just not working for DePaul. They've got to figure something out to try and score a goal against this Butler roster. Quick shot saved by Smooth Space. And it's going to get him scored on. Not sure what uh, was going was. through the mind of DePaul there, but Butler's able to take another goal up 2-0 with two minutes to go. 
It's the classic, you get past the ball and then you shoot on your own goal. Is that a classic? I, I've seen it too many times. <laughs> Maybe I'm just not very good at sports, but. Morales able to intercept in the air. Hyde takes it out from underneath of him. Can't quite get the double. Joseph forced to control. And immediately taken out by Kai before he can do anything with it. Mm, so close there. Kai was trying to get that redirect. Couldn't quite find the back of the net. Kai forced to retreat. It's a good bump, smooth space, trying to make something work. They got to get the ball in the net if they want any chance of coming back at this game. Only a minute 15 left. I'm not sure if they can do it with the pressure they've put on. Yeah, they've got to make something happen, and they got to make it happen right now. It's desperate times. You got to start making desperate measures. Kai passed all the defenders. Morales able to smack it behind the last DePaul defender. 3-0. Inching itself in there. Just a nice little tap as the DePaul defender is moving way too quick to save that. Looking a little grim for DePaul here. It is looking very rough. DePaul looks like they might be shut out in yet another game. Good save there from Joseph. And Craig just, is able to find the net. Just some style points there. I probably doesn't need it, but Craig with some great aerial movement there. Perfect bounce off. And Patso was just not able to save it. Right off the head of Patso. Just jumped up a little bit too late for that one. Just like we saw in game one, Butler with a 4-0 advantage over DePaul. And the passing plays. We said it wasn't working for DePaul, but man, Butler is able to find these passes. Sometimes they don't quite make it to the net, but even getting that ball cleared back onto DePaul's side, it is working for him. Beautiful block there from Kai. Craig trying to take control. Up for Morales, one more for the road. Almost. Now Butler just plays damage control with the remaining few seconds. Don't need to give DePaul any free goals here. Take the 4-0. Trying to keep it up. Move on to game three. Guys, still Let's keeping see. it up in the air. Butler might be greeting a little bit for a little style points on the goal. They are getting a little, little greedy. Morales able to clear it um, away. And it does hit the ground. Butler taking another dominant game. 4-0 over DePaul for a two-game advantage in this best of five. DePaul's just got to change something up. Be a little more aggressive. Even if you give up some free goals, as long as you're able to put up some pressure, uh, they, they just got to make that change. Yeah, absolutely. They've, they've got to work on their communication. It, it really comes down to the basics of getting your rotations in line, communicating with your team, working on your boost management, and they're just, they're kind of struggling with all of it at the moment. Yeah, and now it starts to come in the, the mental fortitude of playing. You're down 2-0, you were kind of, kind of styled on for those last two. So are you able to reset yourself, communicate with your teammates? We'll, we'll see. Um, yeah, it's gonna be tough. Half of this game is mental, and when you're down 2-0, it's tough. Down 2-0, but also you're down eight goals to zero over the course of two games. It's pretty tough to bounce back from. Yeah, a little demoralizing for sure. Uh, but looking at Butler, some of, some of those movements, beautiful. They are feeling it today. They are, That's for, for sure. sure. Definitely fighting for that number one in the Big East spot. Currently held by Seton Hall. But they will get a lot closer if they take this third and final game, hopefully, maybe, hopefully. against DePaul. We'll see. And we're heading into the action. Into game three. This could be it. Could DePaul reverse sweep? We will see the next four minutes or so. 
Butler already able to take super strong possession. Craig with a quick shot. Buries into the net. 15 seconds into they, game three. They, they stopped him from scoring double than they did last time. Exactly. Improvement. <laughs> Improvement. Default's doing a little bit better. <laughs> but they've got to get that ball out of their own half. Like I mentioned before, the booming clears are great, but you need your teammates there to follow it up. I was really telling Nothing really to capitalize off of it, but at least reduce the pressure. Unfortunately, no double whiff there from Morales and Kai. Craig's able to swing on it. No, Kai just barely missing that. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it looks like Butler's going for a few stylish goals here. <laughs> and I can't quite blame him. You already had the advantage in game three. You're up two games to zero. Just find some clips. There's no shame in going for a clip. But then Smooth Space slots it in the net. And DePaul's on the board after two full games and another minute into game three. And that's when you realize you got to stop going for clips. Time to exactly. take serious again. Exactly. They got to lock it in, get back to scoring the goals that they're used to, keep that possession up. At least a good mental reset for DePaul. Absolutely. Uh, scoring the first one is... It's just a step along the way, but it, it definitely helps. The ball floating on the DePaul backboard. Craig's able to take possession, trying to get it centered for a teammate. Smooth Space and Joseph trying to move it up the field. Craig is able to block it. He's got a teammate. Kai is pre-jumping. Ooh. Morales can't quite find the back of the net. A little collision there. Yeah, a little bit of miscommunication from Butler. Maybe they're just trying to move too quickly, trying to get another quick goal. Another rare miss from Morales. Pato's able to take possession over to Joseph, off the back wall. Smooth space almost slots it behind Morales. Looks like the pause actually finally coming on that pressure that we keep talking about. And as I say that, the ball gets cleared right away. No, but you're, you're definitely right. The ball, I believe, has spent more time on the Butler half this game than I think we've seen the whole series. And only uh, with 2.50 minutes left to play. Still tie game as we approach halftime. DePaul fighting for their lives in this series. And Butler looking for one more goal, potentially, to close out the series. Kai slots it in out of the corner. Two to one in favor of Butler. Nice soft touch. Nice little pre-jump slots it over to DePaul defenders able to find the right place for the ball to go every time. Absolutely, and that's that's what makes these guys so scary to play against is... Ooh. I say that, but Joseph slots it past the Butler defenders. Craig left in a 1v3 against the DePaul attackers there. A very quick answer from DePaul, making it 2-2, two two, a tie game again. Absolutely, again, looked like a little bit of miscommunication there from the Butler roster leaving Craig alone in the back to fend for himself. Joseph trying to take a quick shot. Doesn't quite land. Morales and Kai able to move the ball right back up the field. And Morales answers right back. One from Morales up to Kai. Out to the midfield, and Morales is there to put it away. 19 second play. And Butler takes the lead right back. DePaul is going for those more aggressive plays, and it's paid off in two goals, but then there's open, easy goals left for Butler like that. Yeah, At the end of the day, I think it's what they have to do, and they just hope they end up on top of those trades, but not looking good with the 3-2 lead. It is starting to look grim for DePaul. Morales able to clear it past two defenders. Joseph left with, I was going to say no boost, just picks up full, able to clear the ball away. Kai able to send it right back to the midfield. Morales trying to style a little bit. 
Craig gets demoed. This frees up some field for DePaul. Craig able to save it. Beautiful save. Another save. And he continues to move the ball upfield, just picking up a new set of boosts. DePaul is, they are definitely picking it up from what we've seen in games one and two. The For pressure sure. is there. Oh, high shot from Kai. Real question is, is it enough? That is the question. One minute remaining. DePaul still down one goal. Joseph with a booming clear. Rare miss from Kai, but Joseph misses it as well. Pato forced to clear it. Craig trying to take a quick shot. Picking it up field. Getting some pressure on Butler now. Oh, that was Controlling it on the goal line, not always the smartest thing to do, but he makes it work. Twenty seconds to go. DePaul needs to get that possession back. This Kai is just lofting it over to the DePaul backboard. Morales going high with it. Craig trying to take a quick shot. I take a minute. Oh, looking for top left. Couldn't quite find it. it. Looks like the game ends there. And just like that, we have a quick 3-0 in favor of Butler. A little bit different of a game than when we saw in the first and second game. First game, we saw Butler 4-0. Second game, the same thing, 4-0. Game three, we saw DePaul starting to fight back. Still ended up in favor of Butler, though. Yep. I, I would credit some of that to Butler trying to, to show off and style a little bit. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a win. Absolutely. They cleaned it up. Uh, some beautiful, beautiful plays from Kai, weaving it between two people. Um, really just outstanding play from them. Absolutely. And from everything we've seen, it, it honestly felt like Butler was just the better roster today. It does. It definitely did. Yeah, the level of control, the communication. Sure, there were a couple mishaps in game one from Butler. We saw a couple triple commits, a couple double commits. But they were able to work it out, and they were able to sweep the ball. 3-0. Yeah, but sometimes that's just what collegiate esports is. Sometimes Absolutely. rosters are just better than other rosters. And some days you just have a bad day. True. Nothing wrong with that. So, like we mentioned, Butler, currently number two in the Big East. We'll see what we have. But also, we've got the Big East Championships here in a few weeks' time. What do we think about that? that it's extremely exciting. They'll go ahead a home crowd to play in front of, because um, obviously they're making it. Of course. Um, uh, With I'll a be performance there? like that today? Yeah, for sure. I think the only loss is to Seton Hall, correct? That is correct. It was the other seed. So Seton Hall, Butler championship right here would be fun to watch Seton Hall Butler Grand Finals early predictions two early predictions ah I guess we'll see we will see it's gonna be interesting so we will have the entirety of the Big East for both Rocket League and League of Legends here um, at the end of the month for the Big East EGF championship what a what a beautiful place to do it in I mean you can see behind us uh, the great space that they're playing in, the beautiful lighting, everything you could want to play in a land. The amazing production crew. Of anybody? course, of course, the casters, obviously, <laughs> uh, the but stars of the show. Absolutely, you're 100% you're right. Um, this facility, this is what it was built for. This level of competition to bring teams in here and compete at a high level, that's all we can ask for. A little bit of entertainment here and there, some good games to watch, that's what we're looking for. And I don't know if anyone's ever looked into this but the the home field advantage of esports is it a thing can we can i we think it might be a thing we'll, we'll have to test it out at the end will. of the month don't worry i'll be loud i'll be loud <laughs> um, but for sure butler as you can see behind us they're playing here now you have to imagine they're going to have some sort of advantage playing at their own facility mm -hmm. walking distance from home the sleep that's where it's at the sleep if you have to fly and drive in, that's traveling does take it out of you and can perfect how you play. Absolutely. And high pressure games like this, you need to be 
on top of your game. Mm -hmm. Especially close matches. Hopefully it's a close game. Should be a pretty good weekend. There's going to be a lot of competition. We saw some close games. Uh, we actually saw two series with UConn going to game five. So UConn, Xavier might, might bring some close games. All in the mix. I know a lot of these guys are friends with uh, some of the other guys from the other schools here. So it's going to be some good friendly rivalries that we'll, that we'll see in, in the park. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, every match will be on stream. So everybody at home, even if you can't come out to the park, you'll still be able to watch. That's exciting, but I would encourage anyone who possibly can to come to the park. I want to test if the audience actually determines, helps influence the game. Some Absolutely. cheers. We need some Butler fans here to cheer on our boys. Yeah, it will definitely be exciting, so please come out. Yeah, it's going to be good. Any, any other predictions you have? Anything you, anything you could think of from this last game you want to touch on that we didn't quite get to? I mean, it was a pretty dominant performance. I don't know how much there is to talk about. Yeah. Um, it, it's just how it impacts your momentum, right? I think that's the big takeaway. After this, you're feeling good. You're feeling yourselves. You can carry it to the next game, the next game, where it might be a little closer. And that, that edge that you get to start into it is, is definitely a difference maker. Yeah, for sure. And speaking of that, uh, unfortunately, it will not be up on stream. Um, but Butler also has another match tonight against the University of North Dakota. And I believe it's at 8 o'clock. So we will keep you posted on the scoreline on social media. But, yeah, this momentum swing from the Butler, for, from the 3-0 against DePaul, should be putting them in a pretty good place to take another, take another dub tonight. Mm -hmm. A nice little warm-up, if you will. Absolutely. <laughs> but the rest of the Big East season is going to be, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we have University of North Dakota tonight. And in two weeks' time, we will have a match against Xavier. And the week after that will be Georgetown. And shortly after that, we will have the championship. So we're getting close to the end of the season. Moving fast. Really Absolutely. Is. Absolutely. Looks like we're getting set up for an interview. I don't know if we have an ETA on that. I don't know either. It looks like we will be getting Morales up on stream here very shortly. So we will continue to bless you with our beautiful voices on the casting desk until we are set up for an interview. Yeah. Apologies. Okay. It will be Kai that is being interviewed out on the floor. We're headed there right now. Awesome. Hey, everybody. I'm here with Kai. Dominant performance. Uh, obviously, uh, DePaul is a team that we uh, play in a lot of different titles. Uh, we just fell in them the other day in League of Legends. It's nice to get the win here in Rocket League. How are you guys feeling? Uh, good. I mean, just a nice, solid 3-0 win. Um, it's obviously a pretty new like DePaul squad. They ended up dropping their whole roster uh, a couple months back. But, I mean, they're still a good team to face, so, I mean, it was obviously nice to, to come out with a win, especially so convincing of a win. Absolutely. So one of the things we're talking about on stream a little bit is the Big East Championship we're going to be hosting here. Obviously, you guys are uh, looking forward to playing in that. I mean, tell us a little bit about your guys' mental uh, rounding out the season as you prepare for that. Uh, I mean, we're just trying to have a good end to the season, like, going into the LAN. Um, we're really just making sure that we're, like, keeping the vibes up, like, just having a lot of fun with it. Um, we're pretty confident that we'll be able to, to make the playoffs, but, I mean, obviously the land's going to be, like, all Big East teams. It's going to be a lot of fun to see everybody, like, in person, be able to play them. Um, so, I mean, for now, we're just, we're really gonna, looking to have fun, but, I mean, come land time, we're, we're trying to win it all, so. Awesome. We're looking forward to that. Um, be sure to tune in uh, for the Big East Championship when those roll around. Other than that, we'll send it back to the desk. And there you have it. Wonderful interview from Kai. But I think that's it for us, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's nice to see that he's excited about the land as we are. Absolutely. It's going to be a lot of fun. But as, as Brian mentioned, if you can, please come out, support the Butler Bulldogs, both of our Rocket League and League of Legends teams. I'm sure they will enjoy it with the home crowd advantage. Well, thank everyone 
joining the stream. I'm Bubbles. I'm Enham. Um, we wish you a good night.